Okay, so let's acknowledge ourselves first for being here in the first place. Come on. You know, it's a good idea to give yourself what you wait for everybody else to give you. <laughs> so maybe you go ahead and can have it now. Yes. You know, I know people that won't acknowledge themselves, but they want everybody else to do it because they don't know that the universe is a reflection of the way you feel about yourself and the way you treat yourself. And obviously people think that that couldn't be true because they couldn't possibly be asking for some of the things that's happening to them. But that's because they're out of touch with what's going on all the way through their mind and not just the top layer. And the top layer of your mind is the you you think you are at any given moment. So the Course in Miracles is, um, the purpose of the Course in Miracles is to give us a new interpretation of everything. The purpose of the Course in Miracles is to give us a new interpretation of everything. Did I say the purpose of the Course in Miracles is to give us a new interpretation of everything? The purpose of the Course in Miracles is to give us a new perception of everything because we need it. Because if you feel anything other than complete peace all the time, then you have some wrong perceptions and interpretations according to the Course that you are using on yourself and on your life. So if you're feeling less than joyful right now, it's nobody's fault. <laughs> there isn't another person that's to blame for it, especially if you're over 13. <laughs> so I want to start out by uh, giving you the guidelines to the course, the only guidelines for this class. This. And, uh, and ask you to remember not to get too serious about this. And I think that we've been pretty successful about that, right? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And understand, I'm just a person just like you. And so it's a, it's, a, it's a classroom full of equals here. And I'm just going to be myself. I'm not going to try to be like a teacher should be, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> okay, if, if that's the problem now, is that whenever I'm not happy, I'm not being my authentic self. I'm trying to be what I think somebody else wants me to be so they'll approve of me and validate me and tell me that I'm worthwhile and valuable and loved. Freedom is not giving a darn about any of that. Mm -hmm. You know, freedom is of the mind, according to the courts. It's not even of the body. Freedom is having an innocent mind. Freedom is not being full of fear and guilt and separation and depression and anger. That's freedom. The body can't really be free. Did you know that? Because the body is limited. My body can't walk through that wall. There's a limit to what my body can handle physically, right? Mm -hmm. So the body really isn't about the freedom of the body because the body really is not capable of truly being free because your body is just following your orders. Mm -hmm. Your conscious orders and your unconscious orders. orders. Everything that's happening with your body is ordered by you, but you may not know that. So, so what I need is a new perception of everything that will give me peace. I need, I need the way to look at my relationships to give me peace, my financial situation that gives me peace, my spiritual situation, my health situation, my every area of my life, I want a way to look at it that no matter what's happening, I can have more peace. That's the purpose of the Course in Miracles, is to teach us how to let go of the blocks, which is really awesome. What happens is, and I've been doing this, well, I had my 34th anniversary of studying the Course yesterday, day for yesterday. It was 34 years ago. Thank you, thank you. My, my relatives think I'm a slow learner. <laughs> so, <laughs> you mean you still studying that same book after 34 years? What's up with that? That's hard. You know, you don't even want to study nothing to take that long to get. <laughs> they don't know it's a case of, per of a person finding out something that works. And so they keep using it mm -hmm. and trying to learn more about it because we are taught that learning just means you constantly jump around from one thing to another without ever mastering anything. And so therefore, the more information you gather, the so-called smarter you are, or the high, mm -hmm. you're in a higher consciousness because now you're studying so many things, right? So I found out that if I take the time to focus in on one thing and try and just focus in on it and get it to work, it's amazing. There's so many miracles happening in my life 
that is bringing up every ounce I've presented for the last few weeks has been a trip, man. I mean, everything in me that thinks I don't deserve the kind of life that I live is coming up to make me think it's a, it's, it's a trick. <laughs> you couldn't possibly deserve the kind of people you have in your life. You couldn't possibly deserve the kind of treatment that you're getting. You couldn't possibly deserve the kind of opportunities that are coming your way, you know? Just had, just, uh, just had an agreement yesterday to, I mean, a couple of days ago, to go to Sweden to teach. You know, and lining that up, you know. Just got back from Ibiza in Spain, you know. And the only thing I did was decide that I really wanted to wake up. That I would rather be happy than right. Mm -hmm. Being willing to admit that if I didn't really feel peace on the inside, maybe something inside of myself I need to look at. And most of all, realizing I didn't create myself and there's something greater than me that I can turn to within me and without. So... When I do these classes, it's so that I can remember it better and hopefully remember it better with some other people that want to remember it better. So, so the only rules in my class are that those of you who are here for the first time, whether voluntarily or dragged, <laughs> uh, the first thing I like to say is you don't have to believe a doggone thing you hear come out of my mouth. You don't have to believe anything. You, don't have, you need not accept anything that I say in this class. You need not welcome anything that I say in this class. I guarantee you, if I do this right, some of the things I say you're going to actively resist. Some of it you're going to find startling. Some of it might make you mad, and some of it might make you feel good. Some of it may be so true, you go unconscious. When I hit on your main thing that you really do to screw you, the first reaction when that starts to come up is this. <laughs> so when you find yourself doing that, you really need to listen to the video when you get a chance. <laughs> That's why I record my classes. That's why I video them. So hopefully you'll go back later and really hear what I said today because the parts that most apply to your ego would be the parts you'll go unconscious on the most. I promise you that. Okay? So I'm grateful to you. I'm thankful that you're here. So what I'm going to do right now is... Um, share the introduction to the Course in Miracles, and then I'm going to go into the section that we're going to try to do as much of it as we can today. And uh, I like to say you look exceptionally cute. <laughs> All of you, there's a cuteness that's far beyond the regular Sunday cuteness that we're <laughs> looking at right now, and a large level of juiciness. <laughs> do not drip on our carpet. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been Earl's class. <laughs> the whole carpet went. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like you to just take a breath now and close your eyes if you don't mind and focus on my voice right now. Focus on my voice, 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 focus on my voice. This is a course in miracles. This is a course in miracles. The course in miracles is a required course to change your perception to a perception that gives you only joy. Is a required course. Only the time you take the course is voluntary. Free will doesn't mean that you can't establish the curriculum. Free will doesn't mean that you can't establish the curriculum. If you say you want to be a doctor and you go to college, they tell you the courses you are going to take. You can't decide the curriculum, but you can decide whether you want to do it or not. So your free will doesn't mean that you can establish the curriculum to your happiness. Free will means that you can only elect what you want to take at a given time. You can do as much of your curriculum of love and happiness as you want to do at a particular time. This course doesn't aim at teaching the meaning of love. I say that this course doesn't aim at teaching you the meaning of love. The meaning of love hmm, is beyond what can be taught. The meaning of love is beyond what can be taught. The meaning of love is beyond what I can teach you. The meaning of love is beyond what anything can teach you. The meaning of love is beyond what anything can teach you. 
The meaning of love is beyond what anything or anybody can teach you. Nobody can teach you the meaning of love. Nobody can teach you the meaning of love. Nobody can teach you the meaning of love. That's beyond what can be taught. But the course in miracles, the course in right perception, that's all it means. Aims at removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence. It's time to remove the blocks to the awareness of the presence of love in your life. Would you like to have the blocks removed to the presence of love in your life? Would you like to have the blocks removed to the presence of abundance in your life? Would you like the blocks to happiness? Would you like them to be removed in your life? Do you know that love and happiness is your natural inheritance? Do you know that you're supposed to be experiencing love and joy and happiness and fun and peace in your life? Do you know that that's your natural inheritance is to know love and to feel love? Do you know that love is the opposite of fear? Love is the opposite of fear. Love is the opposite of fear. Love is the opposite of fear. Love is the opposite of anger. Love is the opposite of anger. Love is the opposite of depression. Love is the opposite of lack. Love is the opposite of sickness. Love is the opposite of guilt. There is no guilt in love. There is no fear in love. There is no anger in love. There is no depression in love. There is no harmfulness in true love. In real love, there is no fear. So fear is the opposite of love. Fear is the opposite of love. So if you're full of fear, if you feel separate from people around you right now, and you feel a little uncomfortable, and you feel afraid, that's not love. That's the call for love. That's the request for love. You're feeling a need to know you are love. That's why you're feeling fear right now. So the opposite of love is fear. But love, which is what is all encompassing, can have no opposite. There is no real opposite to love. There is no real opposite to love. There is no real opposite to love. Mm. So, the courts can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. The courts can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. The courts can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened, nothing unreal exists. 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 Nothing real can be threatened. If it's a real relationship that you have with somebody, then that relationship cannot be threatened. If it's real, it can't be threatened. If it's real, it can't be threatened. If it's real, it can't be threatened. If it's real, do you know that it can't be threatened? Do you know that if it's real, it cannot be threatened. If it's real, it can't be destroyed. If it's real, you can't lose it. If it's real, it doesn't change. It might expand, but it doesn't change. If it's real, you can count on it. If it's real, it's dependable. If it's real, it's not scaring you. If it's real, it brings you joy and peace. So, nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God, the peace of love. It comes from knowing that if it's real, it can't be threatened if it's unreal. It doesn't exist in the first place. So that pretty much sums up a lot of our relationships. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the hardest part about the Course in Miracles, or any truth teaching really, is that it, they, just, they always destroy all of your denials and deceptions about yourself. Everything that you're telling yourself is not true. When you get into the truth, you find that you find out about it. And that can be difficult to take sometimes. That you that something you thought was real, you find out it wasn't. And then something that is real that you didn't know, you'll find out about that too. So I'm gonna talk today <laughs> on a section that's called the self-concept versus self. 
It's on page 656 of the text, and I got a few longer copies up here if you want to follow along, that's fine. And if and have any reaction you'd like to have to what I said today, it is perfectly okay to stretch out on the floor, go to sleep, whatever you need to do. Um, because what this is saying is so deep that I want to see what it, what, how it affects you. So I'm going to go through some of it, and then I'm going to throw it open for discussion and questions for a few minutes, and then I'm going to go through some more. Every week, those of us who want to move forward and get the material and get a chance to hear it, and those of us who need to discuss and try to get clarity, we get a chance to do that. Is that fair enough? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the Course in Miracles says, the learning of the world is built upon a concept of the self adjusted to the world's reality. And the concept of yourself that's adjusted to the world's reality fits the world's reality well. Uh, so that means this is an image that suits a world of shadows and illusions. And I'm going to go back through it and say, you see that it, it, what it says in just a minute. It's a funny thing about the course. You hear it the second time. So here, this image walks at home, where what the image sees is one with it. So in other words, the building of a concept of the self is what the learning of the world is for. So everything in the world is trying to teach you a certain way to look at yourself. The world is trying to teach you a concept of yourself. That it was, of course, called the ego. So from the time you were born, the world has been teaching you how you should look at yourself, what you should value, what should be important to you, and what you should believe. So since you were born, you've been doop, 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 blah, 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 <laughs> building a concept. <laughs> Sometimes it crashes and you have to build it all over again. <laughs> okay, everybody with me? So, so if you, when you're listening to the course, if you don't understand one sentence, just go to the next one. Because all it's going to do is restate what it just said another way. So, so it's sort of like a book that's saying, if you don't get it this way, then I'll say it this way. And if you don't get it this way, I'll say it that way. So you could take one sentence out of that whole paragraph, and you know basically what that whole paragraph was saying. For instance, the, it's saying the building of a concept of yourself is what the learning of the world is for. That's the purpose of all the commercials, the ads. You, you, are, you're, you are not cool if you wear white in the fall. You're seriously disturbed. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So we were taught that. And so then, you know, you don't wear a short skirt to church, right? You were taught that. So I want you to disobey that. <laughs> <laughs> Prove you're liberated. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to laugh when you're judging me. <laughs> they tend not to go together. You know, when you're judging somebody, it's hard as hell to laugh with them. <laughs> because you learned that the teacher isn't supposed to say that, especially in church. See, building of a concept of yourself. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's the concept that's reacting. Right? That's why I like to say outrageous things, because people can think they're spiritual giants and can't take any kind of thoughts or sentences or words that's different from what they think is right and proper. It's amazing. Think about the next time you're offended by what you think of as profanity. It's just a word like any other word. Your concept that you built says this isn't acceptable to hear. You see what I'm saying? And so you really believe it's true for everybody else because it's true for you. And then you try to put your beliefs on somebody, someone else and so they need to live by your beliefs because you need to have your concept strong. So you need these validation because it's not real. <clears throat> so it says the building of a concept of the self is what the learning of the world is for. So that's the purpose of the learning of the world. Now this is the purpose of the world. First of all, you, came, you come without a self. So you landed here and you didn't have a self. And then it says, so you have to make a self up as you go along. So from the time you were a child, you've been making a self up. Oh, this is what I think I am. 
and this is what I think I am, and this is what I think I am, and this is what makes me happy, and this is what makes me unhappy, and this is what I want, and this is what I want, and this is what I want, and if I have this, then I am really validated. And if I, so from the time we were born, we didn't have a self, so we started to make up one, and the Course says by the time you reach so-called maturity, like we are now, we have perfected our concept of ourselves. And so we're sure we know who we are. <laughs> and we look at everything and everybody based on whether or not what they say agrees or disagrees with our concepts. <laughs> so if I say something that you agree with, then what I've said is true. If you don't agree with it, then it's not true. It, we're the arbiter now of what's true. It couldn't be true unless I say it's true. So if he says something and I don't believe it, I don't just go, I didn't believe what Earl says. I walk out and say what Earl says wasn't true. Mm. See the difference? Yeah. Rather than going, I just, okay, he said something I didn't want to buy, but it could still be true. Mm -hmm. the, the ego will walk out the door and go, that guy's selling a bill of goods. That couldn't possibly be true that I deserve love unconditionally. <laughs> I'm sinless and guiltless and powerful and immortal and eternal and creative and I deserve to be happy and I'm not alone and I was created and I have a creator that I can listen to, be guided by. That sounds like the religious stuff that I grew up with. So my concept of myself does not include God. My concept of myself is that I'm autonomous and I must do everything on my own and be completely self-sufficient and never call on anything greater than my own ego. And even when I come to classes like this, the purpose is for me to give me more information so that I can take care of myself better on my own. <laughs> I'm an atheist. Because that's what an atheist is. It's a person who thinks they're autonomous, self-sufficient, and on their own, separate from anything. <coughs> Not a person that says, I don't believe in God. That's not an atheist from a course perspective. It could be seen that way, but from a course perspective, an atheist is someone who doesn't bring it, believe in anything greater than their own self-concept. They're on their own. Oh, so, some of you may fall in that category. Some of you may not fall in that category. Would you like to know how you can tell? Yes. yes. Please how tell. much fear do you have? Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm. Wherever you have fear is where you think you're doing it on your own. Mm -hmm. So, I think this might be a first meeting of atheists anonymous. <laughs> 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 I'm Earl Purdy and I'm an atheist. <laughs> Teaching classes on God. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't see any contradiction with that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> teaching the class on God but the atheists. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the fast track. <laughs> See, the, so everything I'm telling you is like, is like, that's the Course in Miracles. That's what it does. You. You'll be reading it and you'll just be lying to yourself as usual. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, you know, you'll come up with something that you can't run away from. Mm. So tell me that if fear means that thing below the hood. Because then I can't pretend I really believe in something greater than me. See? Or don't tell me that love has no fear in it. I've never had a love with no fear in it. So that means I have not experienced real love yet. And maybe that's why I have a challenge with relationships. I've never been in love yet. See, when I say, when I tell, when I tell somebody I'm in love with them, it doesn't mean what the world thinks it means well, to me. You know, most people, when they say they're in love with you, means they're singling you out for total control. <laughs> out of all the people in the room, I want to control you the most. <laughs> <laughs> For my purposes and my fantasies. As a matter of fact, I don't really want to know what you think. Because that might interfere with my fantasy. 
Because just sit there. Don't say nothing. I'm projecting on you to make me happy right now. Don't talk and blow it. <laughs> <laughs> right now we get along good. You might get another date. You might even get lucky. Don't talk. Because yeah, right. you're going to blow my fantasy about what I think I'm about to and want to experience with you. And if you don't do it, I'm going to find another projection screen for the same movie. Mm -hmm. Then it looked like I had the same problem with that partner, and I had the same problem with that partner, and I had to, well, if you're showing Star Wars, it don't make no difference what screen you're showing it on, it's going to be Star Wars. <laughs> so if you're still playing the same mental games and you apply it to everybody you meet, the same erroneous thinking, you're going to get the same movie out of that person. Blame the person and don't recognize you are the projector. Mm. Now, when you get enlightened, mm. you will know you are the screen, too. Mm. And when you get really enlightened, you go outside the theater. Mm. <laughs> you get out of the movie theater mm. to see what's really going on. Because, you know, when you're in the movie theater, that's a whole world going on outside the movie theater. But you're temporarily pretending that there really is a Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> But the whole thing, that's what the Course of Miracles is trying to tell us. You're in a great cosmic passion play. You're in a drama now. You're in a movie now. It's three dimensional now. But you've forgotten that you're the projector and the screen, and that everybody in the movie are made up of your own consciousness. Whoa. Well, it's deep, man. I'm a deep black dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have the juice left of you when I get through. <laughs> I love this stuff. Don't you love this stuff? Yes. Especially when you take the time to actually hear it. That notice I'm going slow because it doesn't matter how far I go. Why should I give you more things to forget? <laughs> 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 Working too hard. Just try to, just try to cover whole sections. What? Okay, so by the time you reach maturity, or like in my case, real maturity. <laughs> birthday next month. I can't, I can't believe the numbers I play around with now. Because I feel like I did when I was 10 on the inside. You know what I'm saying? I'll be 64 next month. You know what I'm saying? You don't act like it. I don't know whether that's like um, you or immature. Either way, either way. That's right. That's right. I'm ageless. You are. I am. Um, but it's cool. I don't have a problem with it. Every age has a gift. Come on. Every age has a gift. Mm -hmm. Every one of them has a gift. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you're not your body. So who you really are is ageless. Mm -hmm. So I just described the age of my body, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not my age. Right. This mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. No matter how some people disappointed some people get about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so by the time you reach maturity, you have perfected your image of yourself, and that means your concept of yourself meets the world on equal terms. In other words, your concept of yourself conforms with the world's concept of what you should be. So if you're the kind of person that you do it right by the book, right according to the script of the world, and your values are exactly what the world says your values should be, then you have a mature, perfected self-concept because you are now one with the demands of the world. So whatever the world demands that you should do, you're one with that. Wow. That was one friggin' paragraph of A Course in Miracles. <laughs> that was one paragraph! Yeah. It's 1122 pages of this stuff. <laughs> Any questions or comments about that paragraph? And anything I said about that paragraph? <laughs> Mm 
Did you, some of you, rebel against the concepts of yourself that people tried to put on you? Mm -hmm. Whether it was your parents, whether it was your, and you were called like a troublemaker. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You were, you had discipline problems. Oh yeah. Why? Because you were refusing to be brainwashed. That's what's happening with a lot of the young people today. Yeah. They're not buying this crap that we're trying to sell them. But they look like they don't have the values and they're not as committed or as whatever we come up with. And they're just saying, look, we're not crazy. We see the result of the way you think. It's the world we're living in. So why should I imitate your thinking? So they're waiting for somebody to tell them the truth. And the temptation is, if you're an adult, to pass along the exact same mess you were taught, even though you swore you wasn't going to do it when you had your own children or you were around uh, other people who were youthful. And you find yourself saying the exact same stuff to them that your parents said to you, and you swore you were not going to have that same attitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you have a concept of yourself that meets the world's demands. Mm -hmm. Now, the only problem with that is it means you have to go through all the stuff that everybody goes through that believes in the world, mm -hmm. which is mainly fear. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Broken in two by periods in which they go to a party. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? Or oh, I guess go a little bit further. You better stop me. You don't ask no question. You might have to listen to me some more. <laughs> All right. Don't say I didn't try to have mercy on you. <laughs> now let's just take one minute. Yes. Um, so there seems to be a sort of playing the game. Mm -hmm. that you have to do in the world. That you think you have to do? That you think you have to do. Yes. And I'm wondering what might be another percep pers um, perspective on that. that. That's what we're covering. So Just that's way to Right. Well, actually, everything I've said so far is another way of looking at it. Just realizing it's a game that you no longer want to play, a party. Just you realizing you're the one that's building the concept of yourself would produce a difference. If you realize that you are acting out a concept that's, how do you know the, this is a good, thank you for saying, how do you know the concept isn't you? By the way you feel. Mm -hmm. If you feel no real fulfillment, I mean fulfillment, and you feel, you don't feel inspired when you wake up in the morning <laughs> about what you're going to do that day, you are acting out a concept and not yourself. Mm. See, that's another one of those things about how can I tell if I'm really doing something or not? Because mm -hmm. we go, well, how can I tell if I'm really being true to myself? Well, how good do you feel about your life and about you? Yes. I'm looking at a particular fear in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm a medical doctor, and I'm looking at the fear of lawyers, and I'm looking at the fear of ever getting a lawsuit. And that still pokes me at times when I'm in front of patients. Right. And I really would love to fully let go of it. Okay, so that's where you know you're not believing in the higher power right. to be in charge of the situation. Right. You know, yes. that's where I'm, I'm doing a great do job of operating in this situation, but I'm also being very atheistic in that. I'm, I'm dependent on myself in yes. this situation. So then I need to remind myself there's nothing to fear. I need to remind myself that I'm sustained by the love of God, mm -hmm. and I need to do the workbook lessons and study the new thought system because just like I learned to be afraid of the lawyer, I can also learn how to let that fear go. Mm -hmm. But I have to do the same thing that I did to learn how to have the fear. I have to give myself new learnings. Yes. And that's where, in my experience of sharing, that most people fail is that they don't want to put any attention and study sincerely into the new way of looking at things. They want to hear about it. I said it again. They want to just hear about the new way of thinking. And then their ego says, well, I, I came to the course class. I really got a new way of looking at it. And my life didn't change. No, you heard about it when you came to my class. It's not until you actually give it some personal attention and study and then apply it to your day-to-day -day experience that you give yourself the new learning. And I promise you this, your self-concept is gonna battle you tooth and nail. Mm -hmm. 
Your old self is going to do everything it can to make you not change your mind about the world or yourself. And it's going to do it in such an ingenious way that you won't even know you are just doing the same thing you've always done, which is protected your image of yourself. Because there's nothing more cherished than a person's image of themselves. The, the Course in Miracles says when people say they're coming to you because they want to be happy and they want to change, he said what they're really doing is saying, how can I stay the same way I am right now without the suffering it entails? That's what they're saying. How can I keep the, my beliefs and everything about the way I do things basically exactly the way it is right now, but I don't want to go through the pain that it's creating for me? That's what the average person is saying when they say, I want you to help me. They're not interested. Do you know your most cherished possession is who you think you are? And anything that threatens that immediately meets with resistance. That's how you can tell you're hearing something different. Actually, the resistance is your way of knowing that you're actually now beginning to hear something that might change your concept of yourself so that you can let go of the fear, whatever that fear may be. Because the court says it doesn't make any difference what the fear is. It could be the fear of lawyers, it could be the fear of cats, you know, it could be the fear of a kiss, it could be a fear of my bill. It doesn't matter what form the fear takes. What matters is to get in touch with what is causing the fear. And what's causing the fear is you don't think you're connected to that which created you. Mm. You don't think you're connected to God. Yes. yes. That's why you're afraid. Now, your ego is going to tell you it's the economy. Mm -hmm. And your ego is going to tell you you don't have insurance. Mm -hmm. Your ego is going to tell you it's the transmission on your car. You wonder if you're going to make it to work. All those are smoke screens to keep you from recognizing that your only problem is your sense of separation from that which created you, period. Because if you knew you were created to the infinite power that created all things, you would not be worried about MasterCard. <laughs> <laughs> and if you knew you were the creator of it, you know you could just create something else. So you still wouldn't be stuck. So to say you believe you create your reality while you're still complaining about what you don't have it's totally crock. There's no way you could really believe that your consciousness is creating your experience and you think you lack something that you think you really need and want. Don't you see how contradictory that is? Yeah. If I'm creating it, then I can just create this. So if I talk like a victim, I don't know I'm a creator. That's right. And if I'm smart, I certainly want the part of me to create that's not the part of me that's afraid. Mm -hmm. And that's the other error, right? And that's the other error we made? The part of us that's afraid and disoriented and doesn't really trust and doesn't really know, we're looking for that part of us to make the decisions and choices about what we get ready to do. We sit up here, and the part of us that's afraid and distrustful of anything that I'm saying, you think that's the you that's supposed to be guiding you, the you that's full of fear. But fear distorts everything you see and feel. You can't be in fear and see anything clearly. Oh, so the first thing I do right now when I feel fear and upset is I go, okay, girl, let's make this. Come on now, quick as you can, say, I'm wrong. <laughs> How fast can you say you're wrong? I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. And then people, in the new age, people will say, well, don't you say wrong? Nothing's wrong. Everything's right. Nothing's wrong. No matter what you do, it's right. It's right. It's not wrong. It's not wrong. <laughs> Get all upset. Ooh, wait a minute, everything is right. <laughs> but if everything is right, what's your problem? <laughs> but you just said to me, everything is right. Why, why are you upset? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> See, again, when you practice the truth, you can't hide. You can't hide from yourself. Everything is right, then what's your problem? Why aren't you happy if everything is right? So then you don't think everything is right. So it would be good to like maybe deal with the thought system that said, there's some wrong and some right. Not wrong in the sense that you're wrong, but wrong in the sense that the direction you're going in might not be the direction that's going to bring you peace as fast as you'd like to experience it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not wrong as a judgment. Not wrong as something moral. Thank you. I'm not talking about that kind of wrong. You know what I'm saying? If I if I think I'm going to start my car with this mic and somebody says that's wrong, it's going to save me time. <laughs> Isn't it? Yes. Yo, no. no that, that, that's some, some new age person is saying that's right. What do you mean? Everything is right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I'll tell you, this book is great. It's, it's a line in there where he says, um, you know, you got to let go of that idea that all roads is what you need to take in the sense that you don't have time enough to try all of them. <laughs> so it might be better for you to just narrow it down. <laughs> That makes sense. <laughs> Have you noticed that we can actually immediately grasp something that makes sense? You know that everybody heard that? Mm -hmm. it's, it's just not, it's just that we haven't been taught anything that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. And that's why we say, what's going on? You, because we, we can't understand things that make sense. We're just not learning what makes sense. That's all. When you hear the truth, your mind will go, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh man, I'm glad somebody finally said something to me that makes sense. That <laughs> <laughs> was a little kid, I used to like, I don't know about y'all, but that, you know, I, when I come home from the fourth grade, I, you know, I get the newspaper out and read it. And, and I thought they thought I was the strangest kid they'd ever seen in their life. I, maybe I was, you know, because I saw the whole thing as a drama. I mean, every time my sisters was on the phone talking to their boyfriends and all distraught, and I was like nine and ten, I run up behind and go, ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, out of the room because I just saw the drama of the whole thing. That just didn't make any sense. And then every morning I wake up, I said, the adventures of the Purdy family. Then I run it down, starring Joe Purdy, Georgia Purdy. And then I, then I name every one of my brothers and sisters. And then I say, and starring. You know who's starring, right? Earl. Earl Purdy. And then that's the way I would approach the whole day. So I had to give a soundtrack to everybody. And that's why they got the because I was always doing the musical score to everything they went through. <laughs> because I came to knowing that this wasn't real. This wasn't the ultimate reality. And most of us realize that this in this room. That's why you're sitting here. Yes, sir. The people who have no idea would never come into the room. Not only would they not come into the room, they would say, it's a cult. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, any, any, anybody that's sitting in the class or somebody's telling them that they deserve to choose their own reality, it must be a cult. <laughs> <laughs> As if there's some difference between the two. <laughs> That's the greatest joke of all. But the Democrat is different from the Republican. It's different from the Independent. You know, it's all the same illusion when you really look at it. Yeah. It's, it's, about it. it's people thinking they're separate from each other yeah. in competition and not cooperating and not loving each other. Mm -hmm. Thinking that it's somebody else's fault. And if you change, if Obama change, if the Congress change, if the Republicans change, if the black folk change, if the white folk change, if everybody else change, then I'll be happy. <laughs> of course, the miracle says that's the one concept the world teaches, yep. that it's your fault. Mm -hmm. That's it. So if you would say it's somebody else's fault, the world pat you on the back and go, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Like if you try it with your friends sometimes who are not awake yet. Yep. If you try to take responsibility, they'll jump on you. Wait a minute, what do you mean you were the one? And you yeah. know that wasn't yeah. true. Yeah. How do you know that wasn't true? You know what he did? You know what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, but when you blame everybody, like, oh. <laughs> 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 Isn't that right? Yeah, I'm not saying that's the straight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so that's wow. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Anybody else got another question to come in before we wrap it up? Yeah. Um, you mentioned about the projector, the screen, mm -hmm. and the projector. The projector. Mm -hmm. So, like, if <clears throat> if you're experiencing being in the screen, mm -hmm. and you know that you're not the movie that's being projected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody's yeah. using you for a screen, but what they're saying about you isn't. Well, yeah, you just know that all their, you know, I mean. Yeah. How, how do you deal with that when it's just, you know. Well, if I am able to at a physical level, I, I, and it's just a ridiculous level of projection that I'm creating. First of all, I ask myself, what is it in my own mind that's exactly like the person that's, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. In other words, what are they yeah. saying yeah. that, I have that attitude within myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I wouldn't be hearing it if it wasn't in my own mind somewhere. Mm -hmm. Even if it looks like it's coming out of somebody else's mouth. Exactly. I heard it 
So it's some part of my mind, and I understood what they were saying, even if I was disagreeing with it. So that couldn't be true unless I also had thoughts in my mind that matched those thoughts. I wouldn't understand what the person was saying. It would sound like so. How do you so how do you understand what they're saying? You you have that meaning in your mind. Y'all follow me with what I'm yes, saying? Yes. So 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 what you do is you say this thought I do not want, and then I choose another one. See, that's what, that's what we don't realize. We can go, I don't want to buy that, and I'm going to choose another one that says, oh, let's see. Um, there's no love to God. I'm totally, completely innocent. I'm responsible for what I'm feeling. I'm giving this all the meaning it has for me. What I'm looking at in front of me right now is a big call for love. This book is full of all your true books, even if you don't study the course. They're all full of things you can say to yourself other than the things you say to yourself. That's why you want to get a spiritual practice so that you have some alternative perceptions to go to. Yes, yes. But if you don't study, I'm going to keep saying this over and over and over again. If you don't study, you won't have alternative concepts and phrases to use in order to free yourself from your pain. You will not get the new concept by making it up as you go along. It will be faster to go where the concepts are already waiting for you that will save you. You don't have to make them up. You follow what I'm saying? Like, I have a book for me that's full of concepts that have changed. Like, in other words, if it's my concept that I'm looking through and my concept is determining how I feel, what I need is a new concept of myself yes. and a concept of myself that's based on love, mm -hmm. a concept of myself that's based on innocence and power and strength. I need a new concept of myself. And so when you do a spiritual practice, that's what you're doing. You're learning a yeah. new concept yeah. of yourself. But it's still unreal because, because it's a concept of yourself. Yeah. But what's cool about it is it's a concept that's in alignment with what you really are. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of it. Okay. If I have a concept of myself of being a really loving, kind man, that's still a concept that's moving me toward love, which is what I really am. Beyond just being a man. I don't know myself as just a man anymore after 40 years of doing this. I know myself as a being. And one aspect of this being is this guy that I call Earl Raj Purdy. He's one expression of my being. <coughs> but if I think I am just Earl Raj Purdy, then I won't be able to turn to my being yeah. that's creating it. So you, if you tell yourself you're not your self-concept, people can't hurt, can't hurt your feelings as much. Mm -hmm. See, they only hurt your feelings if you believe what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what they've done is they've got you in touch with what you believe about yourself because if you didn't believe it, they wouldn't upset you. Mm -hmm. So the fact that it seems like the projection on you is upsetting you is saying, oh, I got the thought, I got the thought, I got the thought, I have the thought, I have the thought, I believe the thought, I believe the thought. How do I know? Because there's some part of me that is bothered by what they're seeing. If I was not bothered at all, I wouldn't even think about how I'm going to react because there would be no need to have a reaction because I'm still peaceful. Mm -hmm. So if I'm trying to figure out how to react, that means I've already bought into something that they told me. But, but how do you get to know each other? You get to know each other by recognizing that you communicate. Mm -hmm. That's how you get to know each other. You, you communicate what you're honestly, authentically feeling right. and seeing. That's the scariest thing of all, though, yeah. because we are afraid if we show people our honest, authentic self, then, then we might lose them mm -hmm. or they might upset them. We, we are not on the level of consciousness yet that we recognize that would be the best thing that could possibly happen yeah. to you your whole life is that people yeah. who couldn't accept you for who you are would move away from you <laughs> to leave some room for the ones that will, that would be absolutely bliss to be around. Mm. But if you don't even believe you're valuable, then you try to hold on to the one or two little shabby relationships that you think you got. <laughs> Teach. Yeah, if I, if I don't think Earl is valuable, then I'm not going to take the chance to tell the truth. Because I think there's such limited love in my life, I can't take a chance on losing the person who really doesn't love me because they can't accept me. But I'd rather be with the person that can't accept me than be with nobody at all even though I'd be happier. <laughs> yeah. Because then I wouldn't be dealing with any negative projections on me at first. Mm -hmm. Give me a chance to study and learn without all that opposition, mm -hmm. begin to get strong enough within myself about who I really am, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can be around anybody because they can't affect what I feel about myself because I know that only loving thoughts are true mm -hmm. and everything else is a call for help. So if you're looking at me, and I'm looking at you, and we're not looking at each other with any kind of joy and any kind of happiness, then we're just not seeing each other correctly. That's all. 
So what we want to do is say, how can we let go of all the blocks to seeing each other as the loving beings that we really are? And when you say that, the universe sends you everything you could possibly need to make that happen because it's just been waiting for you to ask. <laughs> it, that really, it really is true, just ask and you shall receive. And that's really true. But it's hard to ask if you don't think there's nothing to nobody to ask. What I used to do was make up my mind about what I should do, then ask God's help. I do that first. I come up with my plan about how exactly I thought everybody should be for Earl. And then once I come up with my plan, <laughs> then I turn to the higher power and say, yeah, what you do? <laughs> it's just most of the time we come up with things that don't work. Yeah. How do we know that? Well, when was the last time you had something that didn't make you want something else? Okay. <laughs> so that's how you know what's your plan. As soon as you get it, you're not satisfied. But the ego says, that's because if you allow yourself to be satisfied, you're being stagnant. You're not pre being creative unless every second you're not satisfied with anything enough to want something else. That's the trick, and we fall for it every time. So then we do manifest things and don't let ourselves enjoy any of it. Because as soon as we get it, we are on to something else, oh, so I'm it's, it's, it's the biggest trick in the world. Rather than taking a minute and going, wow, I appreciate you. Wow, I appreciate this. Wow, it's great to be in front of you all right now. Let you in. Consume you. That's what you want. Yes. You want somebody to eat you. <laughs> Receive you, love you, yes. appreciate you, acknowledge you, and most of all, see you. Yes. 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 Hear you. Hear you. Everybody let you know everything you need to know in five minutes if you listen. If you become conscious of yourself, you can spend five minutes with somebody and say, I'll go out with them over my dead body. <laughs> because if you know what you want, you know when you're not hearing what you want. If you don't know what you want, you're going to take a chance on everybody that shows up. Let's see. Is she breathing? Yeah, I'll go out with her. <laughs> and it's not necessary she really be breathing. <laughs> That's the practice. <laughs> I'm so discerning. <laughs> so would you acknowledge yourself and hear a little bit of this today? Oh my God. Jesus Christ. I'm going to do a quick little wrap up in a minute. Let's do the financial expression of appreciation. I thank you for sharing with me. I'm a full time teacher of the Course in Miracles and Truth, so I appreciate you seeing value in what you receive through me enough to share financially. If you don't, you cool. Love you. Love you anyway. All that I, would you say I am sustained by the love of God? Now that doesn't mean that you are sustained by loving God. I want you to be clear. When you say I'm sustained by the love of my creator, you're not saying I'm being sustained because I love God. God doesn't have an right. ego right. to receive your praise. God isn't like us. <laughs> Our greater self doesn't need constant validation. It's, I can just see the creator. If you could imagine the creator was a person, which it is not, except it has an idea of itself as a person, because we're sitting here. So whatever God is, it must have an idea of itself as a person. Why? Because I'm here. And you are too. So I'm available for one-on-one -on -one sessions called Clarity Sessions. And for those who are open to it, I also use my knowledge of astrology and numerology as a tool for communication with spirit. And if you go to my website, earlperdy.com, then it explains everything about that. And I do it uh, with people out of town as well as people in town. Um, so you don't have to keep dealing with what you think you're dealing with without another way to look at it and another way to handle it. And so go to my website and sign up for the contact list uh, because then you get a link once a week. Uh, with the classes that I video, so that you can watch them again. So that's that's why uh, that which would be good because it gives you a chance to review it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to say that Earl 
those clarity sessions are very, very powerful. I've had several, and that with studying the workbook has turned my life around tremendously. So it's a great investment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because people tend to believe more the endorsement of somebody they don't know than the person they know that's telling them to listen <laughs> and to use them. So thank you so much. Well, she said I don't know who the hell she is, but maybe I'll check it out. <laughs> now Earl, who I've known for months, he might be trying to trick me. <laughs> so I thank you. I thank you so much. I just go off. Yeah. All right. So here we go. We're gonna do, I'm gonna do a quick review of this paragraph. Now, the answer to it is, I need a new concept of myself. And the Course in Miracles, or any, any truth teaching, so I'm not one of these people saying, the Course is the only way. Any truth teaching, that's a truth teaching, that's a love teaching, that gives you a new way of looking at yourself, will help you have a self-concept that's more in line with the innocent, powerful being that you are. But you have to learn it the same way you learn not to love yourself the way you should. It ain't gonna happen unless you put the same kind of energy. Actually, at first, you need to put a little bit more in it. Why? Because everything in the world is teaching you something different. If you drive down the street, if you put on the radio, if you watch TV. So you, don't you see where you would have to be proactive if you really want to wake up in this world? You can't just sit back and think, oh, it's gonna happen. You know, because you're around nice people don't mean you're around awake people. So if you're supposed to come around a lot of people you like, and you have a good time, that's beautiful. But it doesn't mean that they're waking you up. Right. That's right. So, so don't, don't mistake, because everybody around me is nice and I have a really good life in the sense that if nothing is really triggering me, that that means I'm waking up. <laughs> <laughs> that's great that you have that. That's beautiful. That means if you decide to get deeper in your truth and your learning, that you won't have as much resistance as most people do because you have a lot of cool people around you that are supporting you as you are. That's a blessing. And if you're around people that are constantly witnessing back to you the self-concept that you no longer want to invest in, then you need to choose out of those relationships for a while until you become strong in your new way of looking at things, and then you can join them again if you choose. Now, what usually happens is the ones you become more loving and you get more sincere and you're really ready to change and, and really appreciate yourself, they'll, they'll kind of leave you. Yeah. Because if they still believe that they deserve to suffer, then they're not going to be able to be around you. That's right. right. You're going you're gonna to irritate them. <laughs> a lot. Okay, a lot. A lot. That's my fan. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, so, so, so at some point, though, you'll be able to be right back around them and you'll be okay because you know who you are. So you'll know that the only reason you're there is to demonstrate love and to see them as the inf infinite, powerful beings that they are. And also recognize that they're just choosing to pretend that they don't know the truth right now. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows the truth. Everybody knows the truth. Even what you think of your most unconscious friend or relative, they all know everything I just said today. We all know the truth. Some of us are choosing right now to pretend we don't so that we can have this game we're playing of whatever it is we think we are. So in order to be Earl Purdy, I had to forget that I'm an infinite spiritual being so I could take my Earl Purdy role very seriously. Okay, I did as much damage as I could do as Earl Purdy, and so now I'm ready to wake up again to who I really am. <laughs> we call it getting on the path. You know, you know, it's like, no, you reached your limit of pain and you're going, there must be a better way. There must be a better way. I can't take it no more. <laughs> So here we go. Do, do, do. <laughs> Hold the music. The world has been teaching you a concept of yourself that you have bought to the land and sinker. If you are feeling fear and you're feeling insecure and you're feeling angry, it just meant you have bought the concept that the world has taught you about yourself. If you think you are 
autonomous if you think you are self-sufficient. It just means that you have the concept of the self that the world has given you. And that concept of the self that the world has given you is a concept that you're alone and you're on your own and that somebody's doing it to you. It tells you, it's your fault, 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 your fault. If you change, and then I would be happy. And if you change, I would be happy. If this was a different, I would be happy. If this were different, I would be happy. If they were different, I would be happy. If he were different, I would be happy. If he were different, I would be happy. If I lived in another place, I would be happy. If I had another house, I would be happy. If I had another car, I would be happy. If I had another body, I would be happy. <laughs> Say amen. amen. So I'm going to ask you a question. Are you ready for a new self-image? A self-image that is based on love. Mm. A self-image that is based on abundance. Yeah. A self-image that is based on health. Yeah. Are you willing? Yes. Are you willing? Yes. Are you willing? Yes. That means that it's going to be hard. It means that you got to be willing to accept that you are not alone and that you have some help in everything in the universe. Now is arranging everything in your life from this moment forward. Everything is being arranged and you're supposed you to tell yourself that everything is going to be arranged now so that I will have the optimum learning situation to release myself from fear. So everybody I meet today, they're a part of that plan to release my fear. Everything that's going to happen tomorrow, that's part of the plan to release my fear. Everything that's happening from here on out, its purpose is to free me now. I got to start telling myself everything is for my own best interest. Everything is for my own best interest. Everything is for my own best interest. Even if I don't understand it, even if it doesn't always feel good, even if it sometimes makes me feel afraid, I'm going to tell myself that I've given it up. I've given it up. I've given it up. I'm going to make a decision about myself. I deserve only love. Did you say that? I deserve only love. What? I deserve only love. What? I deserve only love. Say what? I deserve only love. Would you acknowledge yourself, Holy Spirit? Lord have mercy.